Apple has recently launched their new iPhone 12 series. Today we are going to take a look at the bigger iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is a bigger iPhone 12 that has an outdated design from the past. New faster processor and an updated camera with a new LiDAR sensor inherited from the iPad Pro. Except the improved night mode pictures, the true potential of the sensor is yet to be understood. Mostly when more developers start building apps, leveraging this sensor, we would be able to see what this sensor can really do. Here is the iPhone 12 Pro Max package, a bit longer and a wider box than the smaller iPhone 12 Pro. It's a light package with not many things inside, as expected. So let's unbox the package first, right? So let's open the box. And there we go. Here is the phone. It's a space gray version. And you can see the lightning charge cable inside and the paperwork. As you already know, Apple doesn't include the charger in the box and you have to mostly buy a new one from Apple. I think the approach from Apple is not necessarily to do with helping the environment, but themselves. You know where I'm coming from. Though Apple on paper is not going to impress you, but their hardware software integration and optimization will make you wonder how do they do this when others come with some out of the wall specifications and Apple phones are still being able to blow them out of water. That's something amazing, right? This review is not going to be a long one. The reason being, there isn't much to review except the fact that the upgraded camera module may need a good look. So what remains, same here. The design is heavily inspired from the fifth generation iPhone with a steel rim around the phone, which can capture tons of fingerprint by the way, and you might feel sick of looking at them. If you don't use a phone case, then you're gonna get disgusted. The display notch is still there, even after three generations. Looks like Apple cannot find a way out of this horrible notch. Taking advantage of user's adaptability is something Apple is known for. The camera design remains same compared to the iPhone 11, but the module has new big sensors inside. Apple continues to use the lightning charging port while allowing a USB charger. How much longer will you be waiting to really help the environment? I could use my existing 45 watt charger from Samsung to charge my phones and tablets, also my laptops. Apple? What are you waiting for? Still taking advantage of the user's loyalty? I would say so. And what's new? A faster A14 Bionic mobile chip. Larger camera sensors to take great pictures with an extra additional LiDAR sensor to support. Apple says it's the biggest sensors that they have ever put on an iPhone. And of course, 5G connectivity. Mostly, it may not be usable for another year and a half or two until it becomes really, really mainstream. But there is 5G. And what is missing? Multitasking is something I really crave for. They are waiting and waiting, not sure when that wait will end. Another important thing that is missing here is a display with 120 hertz screen refresh rate, which has become industry standard already, but I think Apple don't think so. And a larger battery. Surprisingly, Apple has downgraded the battery size to a smaller one from the last year's iPhone 11. This phone has everything you'd expect from Apple, a little of everything, but nothing that you might have been eagerly waiting for, except for the larger HDR display at 6.7 inch. It's mostly same as the standard iPhone 12. Is there any extra value for the extra money you pay? Apart from the big display, the next big thing on this phone is bigger camera sensors. I'm sure it's gonna work good, but again, iPhone 12 and iPhone 12 Pro does everything that a Max can do except the size that is a bit too big for single-handed use. Even for my big hand, I struggle to hold the phone and operate it single-handedly. It's heavier at 228 grams that will make you feel the weight. The width of the phone is what is causing the problem here. 
compared to other flagship phones which are longer and built to be used single-handed. The phone is crisp and fast, it's smooth, the display is top-notch, except the notch at the top. I still hate that. So Apple has decided to continue with the similar display for another year and I don't think Apple will ever give you what you want when you want it. So with a smaller battery this time around, it can last a day before you search for a power socket. But with the rigorous usage, it can mostly last about 10 to 12 hours with about 4 hours of screen time. I think the phone has been optimized so well that the battery lasts better than one would expect for its size. But the biggest problem that I have faced, charging, has been a hell of a problem. With a 20 watt charger, it takes at least around 2 hours to charge from 0 to 100%. That's an overkill. Samsung phones charges the bigger battery in about an hour. That's too big of a difference. Apple as usual don't reveal the amount of RAM on the phone but this phone with their great hardware software integration has only made things work so well without making you feel wanting more in terms of keeping apps in the memory. Everything about the camera in this phone is so good be it still photos, videos, great image stabilization, faster focus, great night mode pi pictures. These camera sensors are the biggest that Apple have ever put on a phone and it shows. The camera design, the ultra wide the wide and the telephoto sensors have really delivered in such a way that it is an all-round camera going by its performance but would I go ahead and say it's the best in the market? Maybe not. There are some major competitors in the market like Samsung Note 20 Ultra which has the most superior sensors with great quality. Just that you gotta pay more but it's worth it. You can take a look at some of the samples that I have captured using iPhone 12 Pro Max. The video that you see, it looks stunning. The color reproduction is amazing. Nothing to worry here, it's the best video camera on the market. But the still pictures are really good, but when it is exposed to light, then you see some troubling issues here. You see those reflection that you see on the images? It always comes when there is bright objects in front of you. I don't, I don't see many Apple reviewers actually talking about it somehow. And the speakers are loud enough. So loud that actually you can play this inside your bedroom and it actually explodes. Few things before I let you go. Apple has only a face ID at the moment. They removed the fingerprint sensors. I think Apple should have both. During this corona pandemic, the mask usage has definitely created a lot of trouble when you use face ID. I had to remove the mask every time I have to open my phone or otherwise I have to use my passcode. It is always about convenience. So if I have a fingerprint ID, I think that would definitely work. Apple should think about it. I'm sure uh, thousands and millions of users of Apple might have the same issue. The biggest need for this phone is multitasking. It is there on every other flagship Android phones, but just Apple still lag behind. These are not just additional features, but it is more of convenience for the user. This will definitely increase the user experience. If you're looking to upgrade from your three year old phone today, this phone might be for you. With necessary hardware upgrades, with a faster processor, bigger camera, and amazing performance, this phone might be for you. Though it's sibling, iPhone 12 Pro is right there in between. iPhone 12 and the Max, I would say, go for a Max as it's only 100 bucks more than the Pro. Max has a bigger screen, everything bigger. Will this be value for money? Maybe not. If you're really looking for value for money, iPhone 12 is the better bet. And thanks for watching.